Wuthering Waves is the most anticipated gacha game of 2024, with many people calling it the Genshin Killer. In this video, I'm going to explain why I think Wuthering Waves will be a huge success, but it also won't be the Genshin Killer that many people are calling it. First, let's talk about the game studio behind Wuthering Waves, Kuro Games. Kuro Games has only released one game since their creation, Punishing Grey Raven, or PGR. PGR is a gacha game that is renowned for its combat system, with many agreeing that it has the best combat system in the entire genre. I mean, just look at this gameplay. The animations and visual effects are stellar, the combat feels fluid and responsive, you can feel the weight of each attack, the characters and bosses mechanics are complex, and finally, it's challenging. You can see that the highest viewed PGR vids in both YouTube and Bilibili are boss fight scenes, not guides, not story showcases, boss fight scenes. So we know that Kuro Games can make an amazing game, but if PGR is so great, why is it not more popular? Well that goes into my next topic. Well, the problem is, Kuro Games struggles with marketing. I personally have never seen an ad for PGR. I only found out about it because of Wuthering Waves and niche content creators who recommended the game. This is actually good news. If the only issue with PGR is marketing, then Kuro Games is clearly trying to improve their marketing with what they are doing with Wuthering Waves. Honestly, if the only thing the community complains about is marketing, I think that's a good thing, since they enjoy the game enough to want more people to play it. And Wuthering Waves is kind of like a clean slate for Kuro Games. They can learn from their mistakes with PGR, their marketing mistakes, and actually market the game correctly for Wuthering Waves. I mean, the Wuthering Waves YouTube channel already has more subscribers than the Punishing Grey Raven one, and Punishing Grey Raven's been out for more than three years. Next, Kuro Game is looking to cover a niche in the market. Genshin Impact players have constantly begged Hoyoverse to add actual challenging endgame content into Genshin Impact, which Hoyoverse completely shut down. They don't want to create quote-unquote anxiety for new players. So Kuro Games is looking to fill this gap in the market with Wuthering Waves. There's a joke in the PGR community calling Wuthering Waves punishing open world because it takes the amazing combat and gameplay of PGR and implements it into an open world game. It's apparently been leaked that Wuthering Waves will have a roguelike game mode and a boss rush game mode as well which is great news for those looking for challenging endgame content. Combine that with great combat and exploration, and you've got yourself a true competitor to Genshin Impact. Another thing Kuro Games does well is actually listening to the community. An example of this would be when veteran PGR players noticed that a lot of new players would drop the game because it would take them forever to reach level 40 in the game, the minimum level required to participate in events and important weekly missions in the game. Additionally, new players complained about how long it would take them to get an s rank character, the equivalent of a 5-star character in other gacha games. Kuro Games heard these complaints and implemented a mentor system, which essentially gives new players access to a veteran player in the game and provides them both with the weekly missions that grant them a lot of XP. This system essentially boosted new players to level 40 extremely quickly so that they can finally get to the more fun parts of the game. Kuro Games also introduced a free s rank selector for new players. In this selector, new players can pick one character from a list of S-Rank characters to unlock. Yep, they literally just got a 5-star character for free. Which is great since 5-star characters are exponentially more fun and engaging to play compared to its 4-star counterparts. It's rare to find a game developer, especially for a gacha game, to listen to their community and actually implement changes that benefit it. And it's something that sets Kuro games apart. With Wuthering Waves, they heard the complaints of the players from Closed Beta Test 1 and recently uploaded a 22 minute long video explaining major changes the game went through as a result of the feedback. This included revamping 90% of the main storyline and voiceovers since players did not think the story was good in CBT1. And they did that all within six months. If that doesn't show dedication to their community, I don't know what does. So if they have all this going for them, why do I think Wuthering Waves won't be the Genshin killer? Well, simply, Genshin is just too big. Genshin Impact has three years of more content than Wuthering Waves, and there are aspects of a game that Hoyoverse just simply excel at. Hoyoverse are so good at creating unique characters with unique personalities that players create a connection with. Not to mention they are at the top of their game when it comes to world building design and music. Genshin Impact soundtracks are a work of art. However, just because Wuthering Waves won't kill Genshin Impact, that doesn't mean it will flop either. 
Both games will cater to a specific audience and will just simply coexist. For those looking for an open world game with waifus as mandos and a dynamic combat system with actual endgame content, Weathering Waves will be the game for them. However, for a player who also wants waifus and husbandos, but also wants an immersive journey with beautiful characters, landscapes, and a decent story, Genshin Impact will be the game for them. And that's perfectly fine. Thanks for watching. Wuthering Waves also recently announced closed beta test 2 for global servers. So if you're interested in that, click the link in my bio to sign up.